Bow our heads for a quick prayer before we start. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for inviting us, Lord, to your house and for a fellowship with the, with the body of Christ. We pray, Lord, that you are in our midst, that you guide our, our, our sitting, Lord, and our discussion, and that your Holy Spirit really is present, Lord, through our, our humility, our openness, and, and, and for us, just coming and seeking you. Bless and guide and just speak to every and each one of us, Lord, because we, we want to know you, we want to love you, and we know that our, our happiness and our joy is just in knowing you and in, in following you. May this name of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, through the intercession of Holy Mother, St. Mary, St. Mark, for all your saints, amen. Okay, so we are in the third part of our... Um, new series, um, The Law of Happiness. And if you remember that discussing happiness, that science, we are actually are discussing the results of science and relating that to uh, the commandments and the Word of God, the Bible. And as we discussed before, that uh, like holes in science and, 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 and theory discover that our happiness and people usually thrive, you know, through different things. And they found out that circumstances affect our happiness by only 10%, like things happening good or bad affects our lives for sure, uh, but only 10%, and it just, uh, it's a bump or, or, a, or a dip, and then, you know, it, it straightens out after that. And they discovered also that a lot of our genetics and, and temperaments and our personalities, how we're born, affects us about 50%, which we don't have much control over. And we knew that there is good news that 40% of our happiness or people are happy because they have certain practices in their lives. And we were discussing how these practices and how these practices were found to be in accordance 100% with the Word of God, especially the book of Proverbs, which is the book of wisdom telling us how to live, okay? And, you know, we're, we're taking like one, you know, couple of practices every time. So in the past couple of times, we spoke about few practices here that they discovered that makes people, you know, happy and thrive and uh, do well in life. That the people are happy, they're not lazy about their happiness, they pursue the right things, uh, not necessarily the things that feels good, but the things that are good for them in the future. And happy people do not wait for someday, when I finish this, when I do this, when I get that, when I, no. Happy people are happy now, it's a decision they make, <clears throat> and they enjoy the moment. Also, discover that happy people think right, okay, they don't have a lot of exaggeration thinking, the all or none, the negative thinking. They just think right. They think realistic. They, you know, also use the word of God is as the man thinks, so he is, and be transformed by the renewal of, the, of your mind. That's what the Bible taught us. And also found that, that the happy people are grateful, and that is the commandment that was given to us to be thankful and grateful regardless of what's going on in our lives. And it is a practice. It is a practice. When you live in a house where people are thankful, thanking each other and complimenting each other, you find yourself automatically do that. People who do that, they're usually thriving people, they're happy people. Today we're going to discuss three others. The first one here today is happy people pursue goals. Pursue goals. What does that mean? They have goals in front of them that they want to accomplish, whether career-wise or even spiritual-wise, believe it or not. I'm not sure if you ever done that, but let me tell you something that I tried and it worked with me. You know, in a small, you know, board cards or, you know, these uh, small index cards, you know, write for self goals for the next three months, for example. And do that during the time of between one season to another. So maybe New Year's Eve. Don't write something for the rest of the year. Just give three or four goals in your life in general that you want to accomplish in 90 days. 
90 days is actually a good time that someone, that's actually a short-term goals and plans that helps a lot. We are designed to live for a purpose, for a goal. When the goal is not there, even if you have all the toys in the world, if you have all the pleasures in the world, it's not fulfilling because you're not getting something, you're not getting somewhere. You know what I mean? Let's actually discover that. And that goes uh, along 100% with the very famous word, uh, this is this, this uh, verse in the book of Proverbs, very famous for setting goals, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. What does that mean? Now, someday, you know, I hope this will happen. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But desire fulfilled is a tree of life. When you fulfill your goals, it's a tree of life. We are made for a purpose. If we live out of the purpose, out of the goal, we just, you know, we don't thrive. And it's just, it's not us, you know. Uh, it brings meaning to us and brings meaning to life. Second principle here, the discovery that happy people are fully engaged. What is the fully engaged thing? A lot of times the Bible spoke about something called wholeheartedly. When you do something, you do it wholeheartedly. Two feet in. Like do it with all your power, with all your might. I spoke about the love of God. With a lot of things, even with service, the Bible spoke about this. Being all in, fully engaged. Uh, David advised his son Solomon and said, And you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. With a willing mind. It's a nice word. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. Let me explain what that is. When you are fully engaged in something, that's when time passes away very quickly. You know, for example, if you are a computer person and you got your new Microsoft Surface, for example. Of course, nobody's laughing because none of you are, none of you got it and you're all behind. You know, it's your, it's your problem. But, you know, the Surface, you know, people are talking about it. You know, for so long, it just came out last Friday. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. So when you get that, and you have like sermons to prepare, and you have things to do at home, you sit on that thing, and three hours pass away. And you lose all your goals, and you do poor preparation, and you know, that's your sin. Okay? I'm just reminding you of your sin. It's like when you're excited about something, like time passes. You don't want to finish that. Or someone who's dating, you know, recently, just, just in the very first, you know, few hours, uh, you know, they enjoy things so much and time just passes like, oh, four hours passed already. That's when you're fully engaged. When you're not fully engaged, when you're looking at your watch, like now, when is he gonna, when is he gonna be done? You know, that's when you're not fully engaged. When and where and how does this happen? Because this is one of the best things that people can go through. I want you to remember this, um, this graph. And I put it in your outline. Okay. Here. <clears throat> here, um, something called flow. This is called the, sta the, the state of flow. State of flow is your best state in life. When your mind is like very healthy, physically you're well, your immunity system is great, and you're just thriving in life. Usually it happens within, you know, this, in this graph. What is this? This is a, a chart going between two things. The, this is the skills we have, how much skilled we are, and this is how much challenge we have in our life. Okay, so let's say here, someone who's got less, you know, not a lot of skills in life. 
So he's right here, you know, not a lot. If he gets little challenge in his life, he's going to be okay. He's going to thrive. But if he gets a lot of challenge in his life, he's going to grow into an anxiety and even panicking. And the more the challenges go, while the talents are, are low, here is not a good place to be. Okay? What if I have a lot of talents, but I don't have any challenges in my life? Just watch TV. I watch TV, and after I finish watch TV, I watch TV. What is this? Boredom. It's, you know, that's not a good life. This, just as bad as this. Why people drink is here. You know, why people go to, like, bad habits and get into trouble for no reason because they're living here in the border got a lot of skills sometimes I see people like this you know they, they've got a lot of skills they, they have so many talents in their life and they're doing nothing they're not challenged at work not challenged at home they're not challenged at church you know so that's you know that's the you know that's the reason so if you got a lot of talents you need a lot of challenge in your life to stay you know, in this flow thing. Thank God we have a lot of talents, you know, and believe it or not, some of us may be in that an anxiety thing because the challenges of life are more than what they can handle. But in my own opinion, I think a lot of people in this room underused. Under challenged even if you think you are a challenge you know what is the challenge challenge could be a goal that you set for yourself a little bit hard to attain but I really want to work for this goal for example you set a goal for yourself in the next three months you know I want to study the five books of Moses doesn't sound nice, doesn't sound attractive. But guess what? If I finish that, like this is something I really always wanted to do in my life. Okay, I'm going to get books and I'm going to try and I'm going to open this and search and ask people. It's not easy. It's not like straightforward. Go get this book, read it, you're done, watch these videos, you're finished. Challenge a little bit. What service? You know, you heard there is a service in church that has nothing to do with this. But you know what? I want to try something like that. I wonder if I can do it. And the more I'm challenged, the more I discover talents in me. And the more I'm stretched a little bit with my life, the more I thrive and the more I grow. It's exactly as a muscle. If you don't use a muscle, what's going to happen to the muscle? It's going to get weak. And it's going to die eventually. You know, how to strengthen a muscle? Just to stretch it a little bit. If, you know, make it out, like, give it to be, like, outside of the comfort zone. Believe it or not, happy people, they're not the people who have nothing to do and they're watching TV. No. People have a challenge. Enough a challenge. Not so much, not too much a challenge in their life, but enough a challenge. You know, and uh, it is very, 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 very healthy. And if you notice what Jesus did, he always kept people. Um, he always kept people uh, beyond their limits. You can do this. No, you can do more. Sell what you have. Give to the poor and come and follow me. Lord, this is too much. I know what I'm giving you. You can do it. I believe in you. He believes in in us much more than we believe in ourselves. Once we, we are in the flow, we enjoy what we do. We enjoy what we do. And we, we enjoy life. And we think like, yeah, life is not very easy, but it has a nice, you know, a comfortable challenge level. Third and last one today is happy people have a calling. Calling in life. And this is the most famous verse for that. Is for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God, when he created us, 
created us for special tasks, special mission. And usually the thriving people, those who discover their mission in life and they pursue it. They have a calling. How do I know my calling? Let me tell you first, it's a kind of attitude, like I have to adjust the attitude first before I find the talent or the calling, because the calling might be there, but I don't see it. Tell you a true story. Two people building houses, okay, builders. So builders or developers, they, they, piece, they, they, they buy a piece of property, you know, and they build a community over this, or, 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 or like community. And two people were asked, how do you find your job? And the first one said, ah, it's boring. I get a piece of land, you know, I develop it, I sell the houses, I'm out of it. Ah. As the same, uh, sorry, the, another person who does exactly the same thing. You know, how's, how's your work? He said, it's great. It's the best thing in the whole world, wide world. I actually build the communities. I build the communities. Like out of nothing, I make people live in a place, build like a school for them. Like I make sure when people live comfortably, I design the house based on the needs of the mother and the kids and like what's needed. And the more I hear the, like, the feedback of people and how like they find like their, like their rest and their nest in that house, like I feel like I really build a community and, 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 and how this will impact, you know, the world, this, this little community that I just built. It's a, it's, a, it's a calling. Someone felt it's a calling, someone did it, didn't. If you ask people about like their jobs or what they do, usually people have a job or if they see it a little bit, enjoy it a little bit better, they can say I have a career and someone would see it as a calling. Like, you know, I think God gave me so much talents and I'm using it and I feel it's making a difference. One time someone was visiting a sick person in the ICU unit and he found like the janitor coming and he was like changing like the trash and stuff like this but you notice he also was changing the posters on the room. So he took like one of the paintings and he put another one. So like he's never seen something like this. He said, what are you doing? He said, oh, my job is a very important job. I create an environment for healing. And depending on the situation and the people and stuff like this, I want the doctors to be happy and the nurses to be happy coming into the room and even the sick, because the sick person in the ICU is not really there, but he's helping to create an environment of healing. He's a janitor, but he feels this is a calling. This is not just a job to pay his, you know, his salary at the end uh, of the month. So, again, it's, it's the way we look at things, the way we look at life, at talents, you know, knowing our strength and our talents, using it or not, stretching ourselves a little, it's keeping the big picture, <clears throat> and, you know, um, uh, um, in order to do that, it's also very important that I have to have a push. Someone is helping me. Someone is asking me, like, what are you doing with your life? You know, why don't you do this or that? You know, how come you stalled in your, you know, in your, in your career or in your spiritual life or ministry? You know, sometimes I need that good friend who stretches me, you know, out and get me out of my comfort zone. Conclude with the verse that we have studied before. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Um, if we're lazy about these things, we are lazy about happiness and about thriving in life. So I want you to go ahead and discuss these three things or some of them according to the questions that you have in your handout put them here in the, in, the, in the screen. I want you in the beginning to pray together as a group, like introduce each other. We're hoping during the series the tables stay like you stay in the same table. So when you come, 
stay where you were last week. When we change like series, we can change tables, but we hope to keep it so we can keep like the the discussion going from the previous weeks. Okay, so start with a small prayer together, and then introduce each other. Get into the questions, and actually, whenever you finish, you know, conclude with a prayer, and every table will finish on its own whenever uh, um, is 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 like the time is flowing.